Okay guys, I really did try to show you as I was putting this tuning condenser on, but I just could not get in there to work with the camera there, so I had to shut it off. So I've got the tuning condenser installed, the leads are connected. Uh, what I'm going to do right now is, uh, is a real simple little test to make sure I don't have any shorts outside of the high voltage circuit. I'm going to go ahead and power it up. I'll bring it up to voltage pretty quickly because I'll either see current right away or I won't. Okay, isolation transformers on, variac is on. Let's turn on the power to the radio. Okay, power is on. Let's go up to 60 volts. 60 volts. Current hasn't really moved. Some dim light on the 42 tube right there. That's this tube, it's looking okay. Let's go on up to 90 volts. 90 volts, current has not moved much. We're at 90 volts. Nice bright light on the 42, I've got lights on the other tubes as well. Real quick, let's go up to 123 volts. 123, boy that 42 gets bright, that's just how they are I guess. All right. So I did not see a real serious increase in current, which means I don't really have any shorts. So what I'm going to do is bring the power back down now and go ahead and put the rectifier tube in. That's the 80 right here. Putting the rectifier tube in changes the whole landscape because it gives the radio the ability to make high voltage. And of course, if there are any shorts or anything like that or any faults in the high voltage circuit, it will show up now. So again, Variac is on. Let's go on up. I'm going to come up more slowly now because i got electrolytic capacitors now to start to form. Let's come on up to 45 volts. Current hasn't changed. I have not hooked the lamp up yet. I usually have a lamp to look at to tell me how the, the radio is doing, but I'll have to do without this time. 45 volts, the current hasn't changed. I'm going to go to 60 volts and let it soak in for about a minute or so. We're at 60 volts. I won't hear anything come out of the speaker if, if I'm going to hear it at all yet for uh, about 30 more volts. Now I've done nothing to align this. I, you know, I, I right now I'm looking for shorts and bad solder joints, things like that. Okay, so we're sitting at 60 volts. Current is still well below half an amp, so I mean well below, so we're doing okay. I'm going, to I'm going to go ahead and move on up to 75 volts. 75 volts. The 80's got some dim light on it. Starting to hear some, some uh, background noise in the speaker. Remember, my Variac puts a lot of noise into a radio, so as soon as I know it's safe to, I'll take it off the Variac. Okay, so far so good. We're at 75 volts and we've come up a hair in current, but still well below a half amp. 90 volts. We definitely have sound coming from the radio. Let's see if we get any, uh, any stations. It's, it's, the tuning is affecting it. Hey, check it out. That's Dave Ramsey. I love Dave Ramsey. Let's turn it up a bit. Oops, that's tone. There we go. Tone is good. Awesome, awesome. There is a dead spot in the pot right there. I'm going to have to try cleaning that again, but I, they, they may have to live with that dead spot. Let's go on up to 100 volts. 100 volts. It's getting a little louder. All right, we're still we're, we're hovering right about a half amp now. Right about a half amp. Let's come on up to 100, 110 uh, volts. 110 volts.
Sounds pretty decent. All right. 1370. Let's go up to 123 volts. Let's go for broke. 123 volts. We're sitting at about 0.6 amps. So for a 7.2 radio, about 0.6 amps. That's all right. That sounds. That's about right. So let's uh, let's see how it sounds. Alright guys, let's take it off that silly variac. It's gonna drive me nuts. Let's see if we can get rid of that noise now. Here we go. That's what I'm talking about, man. Most of that noise is gone now. I got a little noise when I tuned, so I may have to spray that again with some the accent. I think I have a loose connection of sorts in there too. Okay, it's sounding pretty good. Let me give you an aerial tour, a little bird's eye view of it. Okay, so here we go. You can see that 42. 42s, they, man, they get hot and they light up bright. And this, I haven't checked voltages yet, but I will check that. But I don't think there's a problem there. This is all I have for an antenna right here. Okay, that's a good sign. 570 is coming in nice and clear. That's 570 uh, KNRS in Salt Lake City. When that station comes in clear in my basement, I know I'm doing pretty well. I hear some occasional little popping. I'm not sure if that's a bad connection or maybe some capa a bad capacitor in there. I'm going to have to let it play for a while to see whether that popping increases or what. And then I'll get underneath it and I'll play it. I'll do this tomorrow night. I'll lift it up and I'll, I'll move things around a little bit as I'm playing it and see if that changes things. But right now it's a little hazardous for me to do too much of that because I've just got the speaker running through these little gator wires. And uh, I really, I, you know, I've got a bare lamp wire. And uh, I really don't want to be messing around too much and get a nasty shock. So for right now, I think... I th 14 I, for right now, I think that we're doing okay, and uh, I've got some something to work with. At least the fundamentals are right. I've got audio, I've got RF, so uh, we'll pick this back up tomorrow night, but uh, just wanted to give you a show of uh, what we've done so far. Okay, it's time to clean up this little dial, and uh, the best way to do this is with a lightly, very lightly damp cloth or paper, soft paper towel and you do a check in an area that isn't going to be seen so these numbers I checked already are not seen when this thing is in the radio so it would be a tragedy to remove even them but you got to check it on something because if you want to clean this you got to check so we I did test it a little bit but I didn't test it that much so you see there's nothing coming off on the use white if you can nothing coming off on the paper towel and the numbers don't appear to be coming off so very gently I am going to try and get whatever is on this off of here so it looks as clean as possible and then of course you want to dry it because sometimes this ink will not come off with the first wipe but if you let it sit there with the water sitting on it it might so you want to be careful now unfortunately the part with the, the dial part here is going to be the part that was most exposed and so it's going to have a little more dirt on it than the rest of it so you just want to be real fast about anything you do don't let the water sit on there and worry more about protecting it than anything else so you know if there's a little dirt that won't come off you're gonna to have to live with that because you don't want to you know not only will these you know some of these will dissolve in water but even among those that don't dissolve in water there's a chance that scrubbing them might wipe it off just through abrasion so you want to be careful. There's not much dirt coming off on this. 
and I'm just going to call it a day somewhere around right about this point here where I'm at yeah that's as clean as it's going to come without doing some damage so I'm just going to leave it be and I'll get the back side here real quick sometimes the back side it's a sometimes it's a good thing the back side will be the dirtier side and if that's the side that doesn't have the ink on it that's good sometimes these just aren't that dirty maybe the radio was in a good you know clean place maybe it wasn't stored out in somebody's shed all right so that's as good as I'm going to get that now this thing is supposed to slide up and down here but I don't want to put any lubricant on it because that'll just cause uh, you know stuff to gather that I don't want well, you want to be careful with this that you don't get it out of these tracks there we go so what I'm going to do is just clean these little slider tracks and I think that'll be all I need to do here's my favorite all-around cleaner for that just a little bit of lacquer thinner being careful not to get anywhere near the plastic with it in fact let's see will this just come out there we go that's a better way see how you got stickiness in there it looks like at some point somebody put some oil or grease in there it's really not needed in fact I wouldn't do it because it's loose enough to slide but you start adding oil and grease in there and it'll start collecting dirt and dust and pretty soon it's a mess I might as well just clean the whole thing while I'm in here there we go make sure then that you get the slider track that'll get pretty grungy okay all right, let's uh, let's slide this back in there. Okay, so it looks like you put the top ones in first. just drops down you put the bottom ones in yeah that feels if it doesn't come out of the track it feels quite a bit better all right the next step is to mount this wheel that sits in this little set of friction discs here so let me get make sure I get that clean really doesn't get that dirty so basically it's just a real quick wipe down now this thing sat up here like that and it did so with the uh, rim of it down here in the friction discs so let me uh, really quick do a quick clean in those friction discs You don't want to separate them. You don't want to get down in between them because if you bend those, they'll never work. Because what they do is they squeeze down on the rim of this big wheel. I've mentioned that these are like what are in sewing machines. And the way the ones in sewing machines work is you have the discs like this. that Instead of squeezing down on the rim of this tuning wheel, they squeeze down on the thread. And depending upon the thread what kind of thread it is you adjust the amount of squeeze that they apply to it to give it the right amount of drag on the thread as it flows through the sewing machine All right, that kind of went in there let me turn that and then this will come around where you can if you turn it just right there we go piece of cake guys Clips right in there. Look at that. Nice. Okay. Now, I remember there were some witness marks on this, but I don't really think I need them. I mean, this thing has a natural place it wants to be. 
And let's just see if that natural place works. Okay, the wheel was slipping, and so I had to take the wheel off. And what I did is I put a little bit of uh, this stuff, real simple rubber cement, under. It was the on the uh, fine tuning that was slipping. So I took this wheel back, this rubber tire off of there, and uh, I applied some rubber cement on the the. Uh, on the uh, knurled surface of the wheel and then also on the back side of the rubber tire. Let it dry for a little while, not till it was completely dry, but just so it was fairly sticky. And then I put the tire back on there and let it dry the rest of the way. And it's doing pretty good now. So, but I haven't yet installed the, the, uh, the drive wheel for the tuning condenser either. So let's see, I didn't notice it before until after I had done that. So I'm putting it back together now. All right, here's the wheel. There we go. Okay, now bring it down here. Oh, that makes a lot more sense. Get that lined up. There we go. And since I haven't tightened it, just manually bring that up there. Now, with the uh, tuning condenser fully closed, um, I don't want that falling off. So I want to figure out. I'll have to figure out with the um, with with the dial on there exactly where it should be but for right now I'm gonna go ahead and say that's a good spot so I'll go ahead and put a screw in the, the set screw in the hole let's see I'm gonna see something where's that witness mark this is where I could use it That's where it is, right there. All right, let's try that. A lot of things to get lined up at once, but it's worth trying to get it right. Put the set screw in. Tighten her down. All right, let's see how it works. Okay, now let's see if we can do fine tuning. Yes, so far we're working out okay. It seems to travel through the entire uh, range without stopping. Okay, so I think I'm okay. I'll go ahead and take that off of there and let that rubber wheel dry the rest of the way. All right, wonderful. Okay, guys, so this part is done. Now, the real trick is going to be mounting the dial assembly on the front of this radio. So let me get prepared to do that, and I'll show you how we put it on. Alright guys, first things first, what I need to do is remove these two knobs that um, are going to be in the way while we do this. If you remember right, I had to take that, these off when I removed that, that uh, whole mechanism, so it's going to need to come off now. Real easy, just a simple set screw and they come right off. Alright, this has to come off also because it is going to be in the way as this slides on. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. It's, it's not real tight right now, but it's tight enough. So I got to reach in front of you for a second. There we go. Let's get this off of here. Remember this had some burr on it and I did clean it up some. So now I've got to remove this gland nut here 
and and uh, be able to in order to be able to put this on there. So that's I'm going to look at the video and see if it looks like there was no washer under that nut, but I'm going to check it out. So just hang tight for a minute. Okay, when I look back at the video, that washer right there was actually between the the gland nut and and this bracket okay so that washer actually sits on against the bracket so I'm glad I checked so let's uh, let's loosen this baby I didn't put it on too tight there was no need the uh, band switch has a little wiggle in it while I'm doing this but I'll be real careful there's no other way to do this all right so off it comes off comes this star washer okay if I bring this all the way down, yes, I can put it on after I've mounted this. Now that makes life easier for me because then I don't have to deal with that while I'm mounting this. And when I solder this wire on for the light, for the lamp, that'll be easier too. Alright, so I want to I want to put this on so we can get, get that part started. And I don't really like that band switch unsecured, even if it is held in some other way. It's kind of a fragile band switch. If you do one of these radios, you want to watch that band switch because it's not that stout. This helps get that on there easier. Now remember, there are some screws that also hold it on. Let me show you a tool that I almost never get to use these days. I bought this way back when I first began working on cars back in the uh, oh I guess it was around 1995 or 96 that I bought this set and I bought it at Sears but I don't think I can find it anymore but let me show you what it is if you ever see one of these on eBay get it because if I see one I'm another one I'm gonna buy it it's called an old ratchet and like I said I bought it from Sears mail order this was made in the United States a company I think didn't last very long they started with this product came as a really nice little set. I bought the metric one because I was working on VWs and Renaults and Peugeots and things like that back then. And uh, so they had metric sizes. But what an O-Ratchet is, it's a simple, it's a socket that's, that you can pass, um, you can pass things all the way through, paired up with a wrench that's set up the same way. So you can pass things all the way through that. You attach the wrench to the O-Ratchet like that. Now, the, the bigger sizes attach on the outside. That's why I was confused. But you attach this into the inside of this guy. Now, it's a 13 millimeter, which means that's about a half inch nut. And you pass that through, and I'll be darned. I don't have to horse with using a, a box wrench for that. Isn't that cool? Well, it's too loose for the ratchet to be in. There we go. I wanted you to see it, though. There we go. Pretty, pretty nifty, huh? Now. Oh, crap. See, I got so involved in wanting to show you this guy that I forgot something very important. And let me see if I can get it off by hand here. Yep. I forgot I could use this on this. I, I just don't get much chance to use it. I used to use it quite a bit when I did cars. I need to get these three screws off. Otherwise, I'm going to bend this thing up trying to tighten it down. And I'll put star washers on these guys because I don't really want them working loose. All right, there's one. Two. And three. Okay, now, now I can go ahead and mount this on here. Okay, fits up there nice and flush. And I'm going to want to go ahead and put these screws, go ahead and put at least one of them back in place. I almost forgot these star washers, but it is important, guys. 
this stuff. Remember what this is. This is a piece of machinery that's sitting inside of a cabinet that whenever it's being used, it's got a big speakers, not, not more than a few inches away from it, that's going to be vibrating all the time. These old speakers are uh, pretty bassy, and they, uh, they vibrate a lot. And all this stuff over years will work loose. I promise you that. You remember when I took this apart, that a lot of this hardware was kind of loose. And uh, you want to you wanna prevent that from happening down the road. The, the thing I worry about with these old machines is that, okay, the, this person that owns it now is eager to restore it. Otherwise, he wouldn't be paying me to, to help him out with it. But this person's not going to live forever, and chances are good, guys, that this radio will outlast me, will outlast the owner, and will be handed down to somebody. And they, if, it's, if it has fallen, decayed or deteriorated into a piece of junk, then it's going to get thrown away. And so, the way I see it, whatever I can do to make it last physically, um, you know, where it's not falling apart, is a good thing. Even if electronically it needs to be restored again in 30 or 40 years, um, if it's in decent shape physically, chances are better that it will get restored electronically or at least be used as a decoration until someone comes along that does want to restore it electronically. This is why it's so important to do things like star washers because when things are loose and clunky, that's when people think it's junk. But when it's tight and in good physical condition, well, then they look at it and say, wow, that's actually in nice shape. I wouldn't have expected that. And remember, please, that this cabinet is being restored too. And so the cabinet and the radio, both being in good physical condition, are going to help this radio to last a long time, even if it doesn't play without being restored, because no matter what I do, uh, the components will, will they'll have, they have a lifespan, and they're exposed to heat cycles and things like that, and so they will die. But um, if physically the thing is in better shape, well then chances are good this thing will be preserved. And that, that's, how I, that's been my experience. When I go to an antique store, the ones that are in good physical condition you know, where the cabinet's not beat up and it's not coming apart. Those are the ones I want to restore and, and keep, right? The ones that are where the, you know, things are loose and there are missing parts and stuff like that. Well, I don't really care to buy those because, you know, money's scarce. Oh, Ratchet. Definitely worth getting. I'll be trolling eBay looking for another set of these, maybe in American sizes if I ever can find them. Now remember, I'm going to mount this dial. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, I didn't think about that, guys. Huh. Isn't that cute? Let's see if I can get lucky here. I might have messed up. Yep, I did not account for that shaft blocking this from moving, so this does have to be on there in order to mount it. Oh, wait a minute, might just get lucky. Oh, beautiful. Okay, I had to cheat the system a little, guys, so I don't. Uh, it's going to be hard to show you because I don't want to take it apart. I slid this up all the way and kind of just turned it a little bit and it just barely, and I didn't tweak anything, just barely turned enough so I could drop it down in there. And uh, there, there we go. <laughs> oh my gosh, except I got to put that in. So let's see if I can do that while this is, I think I can, while this is sitting there. I remember I had a hard time. Oh, maybe not. Okay, so there we go. So you get to see it after all. So I got to slip that in there. All right, so now the way this works, 
you start at the top and you have to turn it a little bit to get that groove in there you, you so what you're trying to do like it's hard to show you okay I got these four points to get this into this is going to be the one I hope get it hooked into first so I, I turn it just enough so that this little edge here will fit down into that slot so watch what I do I turn it just enough now remember I also want to get it behind this dial pointer and that helps turn it just enough it's in that slot and when I rotate it now both of them are in their slots now I raise that up and these slots line up and with a little coaxing little bit of coaxing now this is up so there we go okay so boy there's a lot of tricks to this guys let me tell you holy crap this is hard it doesn't look it but it is okay okay guys there we go finally you see the idea here that gear that gear has got to engage too there we go okay What a pain. What a pain, guys. Okay, I'm glad I tightened those screws, eh? And I'm glad I tightened everything up. So now I can go ahead and all I really have to do is tighten this set screw on, on this, uh, this little deal right here. But I have to make sure I have it right in the right position. Okay. I think I'm in the right position actually let's give it a whirl shall we I'm sure we'll have to adjust it at some point there's a set screw that you get under here and you tighten all right well check it out what do you think is that cool or what is that just cool or what no let's see how we look when we tune it That's super cool. Let me see something here. It's tuned all the way to this side. Does it overhang the dial just a little bit? Okay, so I'll have to adjust it. Maybe have to adjust it a bit. Okay, let's move on. Pretty cool. Now, really, we're basically done with the radio. And I'm trying to debate whether or not I want to install a, a connector for the speaker. I really don't have anything that looks very vintage. And the rest of this radio is very vintage and I don't know that I want to mess that up. You know what I did guys? I forgot to, to uh, solder this wire on. Why? You know, I just do these things. I don't know why. It's easy enough to get to. But I wish I hadn't done it that way. So it's right back here. It's no big deal. Once I got that done, then it's going to be a matter of alignment and putting it back in the cabinet because I've already gotten it to work pretty well. It just needs an alignment in a big way. So let me go ahead and, and get some little things done like soldering this wire on and, think, and I'll give some thought to the connector thing. And I've got some videos to process. So I'll go ahead and close it down right now. Let's do that with a look at the dial as I close down with some light shining through it, kind of like what it would be like when it's in the radio. So you kind of get an idea what the dial's going to look like. That's pretty cool. 
So we'll go ahead and uh, close it down now. And I'll get to some video editing and get a video up. It's been a long time since I put one up. And so uh, on a beautiful Saturday afternoon, this is August 12th. From your western outpost in Salt Lake City, this is Michael. And that's all for now.